Hello crafters and welcome to this P2P Craft Spring into Sandown online craft show brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows. And we're so sorry about our technical difficulties but we do think we are back and we're looking forward to a great session today. Now Spring into Sandown has a whole heap of interviews and demonstrations from our talented retailers and our guest artists. So for all the details head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au where you can see all the sessions, see who's coming up with a little bit of... Um, manipulation for us to get around this morning but we should hopefully to be able to continue on jury rigged as much as we can so whether you're watching here live or a replay pop in the comments just like diana and em and um carol have let us know that you're there ask any questions and we will get ready to go so i think we've got kathy ready to go are we going to jump into the video okay i think we might be jumping into the video and then we will definitely catch up with Kathy from Eclectic after this. So here is Spring into Sound now with Eclectic Images and Layered Rosebuds. Hi, today we're going to road test the new Rosebud stamp because it's got multiple layers so there's lots of different things that you can do with it. So we're just using that and one other stamp and trying to stay with just a couple of ink colours and then just see what multiple looks we can get with it. So our stamp is the new Rosebud stamp, so new it doesn't even have a label yet, but it has multiple layers for a rose plus some background words in a lovely font. Very decorative font, which I just happen to have two other sayings done in that font. Uh, the one that says a friend is and also this one happiness is. So I've decided to go with the happiness one today. Our ink colours are going to be clay mask and peppermint scrub and sea glass that are all from the Catherine Pooler Spa Collection inks and then also some Versafine Claire Nocturne for stamping because we're working on our cotton blend cardstock and the Versafine is very good on the matte cardstock and also a bit of Versamark for some embossing. So let's start having a play quickly. I'm going to do stuff in this precision press quite a bit because it helps to make multiple layering stamping easier. And I'll just pop my bit of cotton blend cardstock in. There's grid lines, measuring lines all down the edge there, so I can make sure I line it up, which means that if it moves by any chance, I can reline it up knowing that what what mark to line it up to. Okay, so the stamp I'm going to use first for this one is the solid image. So the stamp comes with a solid image, a shaded image, and an outline, and then another more sketchy out there outline. I'll just check with the solid part of the stem that I'm allowing enough room on my bit of card to fit both in and the lower part of the solid stamp, the more flatter edge is your, your lower part. So let's pop that in place, pick it up, make sure my card's still sitting nice and flat and then I can ink this with the clay mask. Just light taps and if I decide I want a very soft look I can actually pop a little bit of scrap paper which there's my scrap paper sitting underneath the stamp I'm not going to be stamping over this edge of paper so I don't need that there let's just line it up again with that same grid mark that I had pop on our magnets these magnets that come with it that have the little plastic casing make life really easy so I'm just going to stamp once on my scrap paper and then once I'll give it a little spritz with water and stamp it onto our card. So we're getting a second generation stamping. Now let's give that a little dry without melting our stamp press or our card. And I'll use my cloth here just to dry the stamp off a bit. So now I'm going to ink up with the same ink pad, but this time just ink the lower half of the stamp and maybe up one edge of it. And you can see, Matthew gets a nice close up for me, that I've got quite a solid edge there. So I'm just going to grab my little brush and just buff that out a bit so that we soften that edge before we stamp it on. Over with our stamp press, press down, and we've added a shaded layer. Now let's just make sure that our card hasn't moved at all. 
and this time I'm going to ink up a little bit with the peppermint scrub ink and we'll take it a bit further out to the edge and again use a brush just to buff that edge so that we don't get a solid line at all on the stamp press down and how cool's the hat so you can imagine that with the outline image then stamped over the top of it so that's one technique layering up color on the solid stamp just with one stamp with using multiple intensities of ink or multiple colors of ink now our next one we're going to do is a smooshy one so for this one I'll line the card up in about the same place. For this one, I'm actually going to clean my stamp. That really is a good thing to do to start with. Clean my stamp. And I want a really smooshy background. So I've got some paper towel ready and I've got my Couture Creations air puffer so that I can actually do a little bit of moving of inks around. So pop it in, we're going to spritz our, well, before we pop it in, we give our card a spritz. Pop it in. Put a few magnets on. Ink up our solid stamp. And give that a spritz as well. So the idea here is that we get quite a mushy background effect from it. So stamp it down, quickly lift up and then See how it's just sp spreading out. That's exactly what we want. If you wanted more spread, you could add a bit more water. You could also come in with your air puffer and just create some extra tendrils. But then we want to take it back. We don't want this being too dark. Dry things off a little bit, then ink up the stamp again. And again, we could add in extra layers of colour here if we wanted to. So let's give it a light spritz. This time I'm not spritzing the card, so there'll be the ink will stay. The spritzing on the stamp helps the ink to mush, but this time the stamped image is going to stay within. Uh, the image will stay within the lines of the stamp because we didn't wet the card, so it's not bleeding out into that. Just checking that my card is still staying in the same place. And we'll do the same as we did on the last one. Add a bit of peppermint scrub in there. Buff it back a little bit with our brush. Stamp that in as well. And voila. But this time, we've made a, a lively little bit of smooshy background behind it. And we'll take that one off for the moment. And I'm just, I will come back to using the stamp press again in a moment, but I'm just going to do the stem for this. So that will fit up into that little notch in the leaves there and I'll use sea glass so we'll ink that just very lightly and again spritz it spritz the card let oh wonderful smushiness where's my ink blower let's blow some of that down a bit dry it off particularly that bit there where we don't want it being too dark now let's a little bit of a heat set so this is this way by heat setting this layer it means that our inks not going to smoosh on the next layer it'll stay more within the stamped image which is what we want and in fact I don't think I even need to re-ink that again we've got plenty of ink still on there lined up with the edge of the petals if you like smooshy stuff. Now, a little bit of a dry for that. We're going to come back to that one because we want that to dry really nicely. So let's set that one to one side 
And we're going to do another panel. Okay, this one we're doing a card and a background. And I'm going to go back to using the press. Now, if you're unsure with a multi-layered stamp as to where your image is going to come out, we can use a bit of scrap paper. Uh, really good if you actually cut it to the same size as your card. I haven't done that. Well, I think I did, but I don't think I brought those bits of paper over. Did I? Oh, look, I did. I love it when I'm organised, even if I forget that I'm organised. Okay, so that's not the right size. Okay, I cut that before I cut these bits. I think I've cut it to the same size as the backing card. That's okay. So, I'm going to work out where I want to have my piece of card placed. And I'm lining up with the two, the two there. And we will look at our outline image. And get that sorted where we're going to want to have it placed. And I'm just thinking, I've got my saying to fit in there too, haven't I? So let's have a look at where that fits in. So I'm going to need my rows over a little bit more. I don't mind if it comes in next to the H, but I don't want it to go too much in the wording. So let's move it right over and bring it up a bit. So I'm leaving room for my saying down there. So now we can pick that up. But before I stamp it, I'm just going to stamp it onto my scrap piece as well. So I'll line that, it doesn't matter that it's bigger. I just make sure I line the top edge of it up with the two. Let's ink up with our Nocturne. This won't make sense now, but it will once we start working with the image a bit more. Stamp it down. Doesn't matter if it's not a fabulous image. We take that one out, we put our main piece of card in. Line it up in the same point. Ink up with our Nocturne. Now this time I do want to make sure that I ink it well. Press down. Lift up and we've got a lovely image there. Okay, so now let's pop that ink away and we're going to now use our other colours that we were working with before. I'll clean that stamp and take it off and we're going to start building up our background layers. So we're going to get our scrap bit of paper and pop it just over the top of that. You don't have to do this. Once you get to know your stamp a bit more and get to know where the placement goes, you'll find you don't need to do this. But it's just a way of helping you when you're first lining up the stamps and getting used to them. So I can line it up on my scrap paper, making sure that I can see the same amount of line outline all the way around, that I've got it placed in line with those petals. Mind you, if you don't stamp it exact, it's still going to look fabulous. But if you really would like it to be as close to exact as you can be, and this is a way we can also test it out. So let's make sure we're lined up with our two. Ink up with our stamp there, our ink. Press down, and I can just double check. That's beautiful. That's lined up exactly with that image. So I know now that I've got my stamp placed exactly where I want it on the stamp press. So now I just make sure that my base card is still lined up in the same spot. I can just close that just to have a look without pressing down. And I'm not gonna re-ink it, I'm just going to give it a light coverage of that ink. Just like that. Oh, beautiful. Now we can do the same with the next parts of the stamp so we've got a shadow layer now so we could just line it up on here but if you wanted to test it out do it on the scrap paper first now this one lines up again lining up that bottom edge of it just making sure that we haven't got any bits going outside of our stamped image That looks pretty good to me. 
Now this time I'll use the same ink pad. I'll just check that that piece hasn't moved and it hasn't. So the same colour, but this time I won't stamp off. So this will be a first generation of the same ink. Press it down, lift up, and we've given our rose some lovely contouring. Pretty cool, hey? Now, same can be done with the stem. So we have our stem. I'll line it up. And particularly with the stem, this little curly leaf to one side, that's a great one to, to help line it up. And also, there's a notch. So there's a leaf and a notch on the stem that's good to help you with your lining up. A bit there. Pick it up with my platform. Now I do want to do this as second generation because I know the sea glass is quite a strong ink. I think that's slipped a little bit, so I'm just going to line it back up with the two and just pop that over the top there to make sure that I still look like I'm lined up. And I don't think I am. Let me just double check that. That's better, happier with that now. Okay, so inking up with the sea glass, very soft taps, and then we'll stamp it off. I'm just going to pop our bit of scrap paper in there. Stamp it off once on the scrap. Take that out and then stamp on our main image. And lovely and soft. It's a good colour though. That's the sea glass out of the new, it's still in the spa range, out of the new um, uh, beach resort collection. And there's also a shadow one of the stem. And again, just line up mainly with that notch and it will be good. Hopefully your stamp doesn't stick to your finger too much. <laughs> okay, pick it up. Pop the sea glass on. Now, of course, you don't have to do the multiple layers. We could just do it uh, with one, just the stem just done with one layer, or we can add in the second one if we want to. So that is just gorgeous as it is. Now let's finish this one off and turn it into a card. So we can take that one out. I've already loaded the, I'm going to, I could keep using the press, that would be fine, but I've actually already loaded the saying onto an acrylic block just to save a little bit of time there. So I actually used the grid marks on my glass mat, lined my block up with those so I could then line the text up and make sure that it was fairly uh, straight with the edge of the block because that will then help me line up to be straight on the card. So now we're going to ink this with the peppermint scrub. So it'll be a little bit deeper. And I'm just looking at where the grid lines are on the mat below. Press down nice and evenly. So you can see I said I didn't mind if the H lined up a bit with the stem. I think that looks really cool. Now while that's drying a bit, we're just going to make a bit of a background to go with that. So for this, I'll use the smaller stamp, smaller word stamps. And to hurry things along, I could just use one of them. There's roses, uh, yeah, roses, there's love, and there's the word for. So you can have roses for love, or love for roses, or you can use the words on their own. And I'm just, again, let's line it up with the grid. Mind you, it's such a sketchy font. It's not going to be the end of the world if it's not exactly straight. And we'll put our little four in there. So to save time, I could stamp them all individually or I can just line them up on the block and stamp them all in one go. I do believe I can fit them all on. 
Okay, and this I'll just do with the clay mask color because I want the background piece to be fairly soft. And I'm going to pop a bit of scrap paper in underneath because I'm going to ink up over the sides of the edges of the card. So let's just ink up and we're also going to do several generations. So we're basically using the words as texture. So you can stamp even three or four times. Great, that's enough. And now I'll just pick up some of this lovely uh, clay mask color and show the background. If you're not sure how much you need to cover, just put your card on to see how much border is going to show because we actually don't need to color the whole card. We only need to color the border amount that's going to be showing. So let's quickly pop some of that color on. Always keep placing your other piece back in just to check that you've got enough coverage of ink. I just need a bit more down that side, a bit more down here. I'm not overly worrying about it being 100% even because this is the backing piece. Now let's come in with some peppermint scrub. And for this I'm going to use one of the bigger, the number 10 brushes because I just want to get some deeper colour around the outer edge there and I'll be able to place it better with this brush than what I can with a smaller brush, well, sorry, with a, the bigger blending brushes. They're great for coverage, but not so good for getting that just on the edge inking happening. And then we're actually going to repeat this on the next card, the next layer. So you can see now, once you get a little bit of colour around it, how those words just become that background pattern. Which I think is very cool. Right, so let's get that out of the way. Oh no, we can, I should, I'm getting used to using a glass mat. And they're actually really good because you can just keep picking up ink off the mat. But I've for years used scrap paper underneath. So it's taking me a little bit of getting used to just using the mat and using the, um, the principles of what it can do for me. So I'm going to colour most of the card with the clay mask. I can work from the outer edge in, but just leave a little bit of a glow around the rose. And then we'll come in and add some of the peppermint scrub around the edge of it as well. So on this card, I'd like to try and get my blending a bit smoother than what I did on the background and I don't really need to stick my hand in the peppermint scrub ink pad. What do I say about don't leave your lids off your ink pads because you'll stick your hand in them? Well, I just did. So working from the edge and then working almost up to the rosebud but not quite, which will leave that just that little bit of a glow around it. Now I did hurry a bit there and I got a little bit too much ink on, so I'm just going to keep applying ink to this bottom half until I manage to smooth that out a little bit. Which means I also need to balance it on this side of the card as well. So I'd either need, I feel I would either need to go dark on diagonal corners or dark on the bottom of it so that it blends up. We always say there's no mistakes in stamping, there's just different ways of creative expression. Well, this was some creative expression now, yes. <laughs> okay, let's come in with our peppermint scrub. If 
find these these two colors work really well together they're actually if you're looking on the Catherine Puller color wheel there they sit next to each other okay now just a swipe around that one I think it needs a little bit more depth on the edge remember with a soft ink pad do not swipe straight across because you'll damage the ink pad make sure you're swiping that way and the more you lean the pad over the more the ink will come onto the card the more upright you are the more it's just on the edge of the card so say if I wanted a little bit more coverage on the bottom I could actually lean the ink pad over and get that on there a little bit thicker right Now I'm not gonna do the sticking together because I wanna move back to one of our earlier samples and finish that off. So I'll just show you how this now goes together. Really, really pretty. So that's just using basically two colors of ink, just with that little bit of sea glass green in there. Now I wanna go back to our smooshy one. Let's just give our pad a quick clean. And hopefully our smooshy one's done a fair bit of drying by now. We will just put a little bit of heat on the back of it to make sure. We'll get out a catching mat because we're going to do some embossing over this. So this is where our Versamark comes in and I've got some marigold embossing powder. And we will definitely give it a swipe over with our anti-static pad. And this is where the more swirly design comes in. And I'm just gonna pop it on a block because I think we're starting to run out of time a bit. But certainly you could put it into your stamp press and line everything up, or you could just do what I'm doing and be a bit more random. So this particular stamp is designed to be a sketchy look. It's designed to go to not match up exactly to the shadow stamps. So it's a stamping with a fair bit of freedom. So let's position it over, just try and get the stem a little bit lined up and the stem not starting in the flower and let everything else just be sketchy. So we press down, pop on our marigold powder And give it a little tap. And hope that it hasn't, that the, other, the underneath layer was dry enough. And I do believe it was. And I'm totally offline and I don't care at all. My lining up there with the stem is totally not what I did. But you know, that's what this stamp was made for is to be a sketchy outline. It's not supposed to be all precise. So let's heat that gorgeous gold colour. I'm just going to start heating on the back a bit just so that you can be watching what's going on. And bring our heat tool around to the front and I should see it start to move. Very pretty colour, the marigold. And you can see how much not lined up I am with the stem, but that is fine because that is the style of this stamp. So let's just do a little bit of shading around the edge. So we've got our little bit of our watercolour smear, which is fabulous. In fact, to make it extra quick, I'm just going to quickly bring my strap in and just do a little bit of shading with this one. I want to shade it in a bit more. I'm just going to go back to circles so I don't get too many harsh lines happening. And I've got one little trick I want to show you when we actually want a strong line. So let's just add some soft shading with the brush there. Then with that same peppermint scrub ink pad, because the Catherine Pooler inks are actually really good for doing direct to paper. So I can actually just line a bit of scrap paper up so I've got it evenly on there. And then just directly with my ink pad, either swiping along or swiping from the scrap out. And we can get a really amazing 
vivid border that's got a straight edge. Which I think is pretty cool. Just got to make sure that you allow about the same border. So again, swiping along or dabbing. Now let's do the long edge. Probably it would make sense to actually do a short edge and then a long edge so you can actually see how much uh, card you've allowed. Like I can see how much width I've got there to make sure I'm getting the same width here. Mind you, it's one of those techniques, if I didn't get it lined up, I could easily go back in, just move the paper and line it up again. There and there. Hold it down. I think the, the trickiest bit is flipping the ink pad over. This is a great way of making a one layer or two layer card look like having more layers by just adding this extra border in. So for example, if we, now I'll just get Matthew to come forward a bit here. If I take that sample out of there, we can actually put that one on there and you can just get that idea of how that looks like we've actually matted that on a darker card, but we haven't. So it just cuts out the number of layers of card you've got to use and the amount of tape and all that sort of thing. But let's put that one back there because it just goes beautifully there. So there's our card. So we've got um, using the shadow stamps, using multiple layers with lots of water to create some smooshy background as well. And that was just the first sample with using the multiple layers on this, the multiple colors on the solid stamp. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what you can just do with this rosebud set. It's just gorgeous. It's got the words, it's got the multiple layers. You can just stamp it any way you want. You can just stamp either of the outlines and color them in. You don't have to use the shadow stamps at all. So it's a stamp set that's got so many different ways that you can use it that I'm sure you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching, see you again soon. Thank you all so much for joining us on that session. Now we have got Kathy here to have a quick chat and answer some questions. Kathy, thank you so much for your demo. Thank you. It went over really well. Glad it, we all got it going. It did. We got there in the end, didn't we? Yeah. So yeah, we just had the question yeah. about the the card and what you were using. Yeah, so the card stock is the cotton blend and the 210 GSM, which I find is a better one for working with. There's a heavier weight, but I find if you're embossing the 200 GSM, is good and it's fine for a lot of watercoloring. The heavier weight, if you're doing watercolor backgrounds where you're really flooding the card with water, like you're doing a watercolor wash, then the heavier weight is good, the 300 GSM. But for most of our crafting, the 210 is fine. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know. And then we had some it's, questions about the glass mat and I guess the Couture Creations um, stamping platform as well. But yes, yes. So they're both from Couture Creations, which is an Australian company. Um, the glass mat is a lovely surface to work on. It's got a grid so that it helps you line things up. It's got a work surface area plus uh, uh, an area for like, blending your colours and mixing. So if you're wanting to mix a couple of ink colours together, you've got that extra little workspace at the side. And with working on the glass, you can have when you're shading your color that goes off the glass you can still keep picking up that ink and putting onto your card there's still sometimes when i prefer to have a paper mat underneath me to stop mess um particularly if i'm spritzing water and things but um for a lot of background effects and a lot of the shading the glass mat's really really good yeah yeah oh, that's something that i'm still just getting used to using um I've had my way of doing things for a long time and then i thought well these glass mats look good i'll just start being adventuresome <laughs> And I think we've got a Grayson in here to say hello. You've got a visitor. We've got a visitor. Can we give him a shot? Hello. Look, Grayson, you're on the camera. Hi. Yay. <laughs> Excellent. So, Kathy, before we lose you today, were there any other specials you wanted to share with us? 
Well, let's mention again that these um, new design stamps, including the Rosebud set, are all 20% off for this weekend. Mm -hmm. And also that anyone order, placing an order over $50 will get a free stamp. Oh. As well, we do offer free postage over $60. So there's lots going on. There's a few other specials as well, but the stamp one is the one, main one that relates to this class. And um, and it's a set that's got so much potential with it. So it'd be really great to see what people create with it. Fantastic. And you mentioned you're going to be having a Catherine Spooner Ink Festival next month. Oh, yes. November is uh, Ink ink, to ink ink November or something they're calling it. Oh, no. So that's, that's a sort of great celebration of Catherine Puller inks being on the market for five years so if we're having lots of specials on their inks plus there's a there's a competition going at the moment on my Facebook page and um, we'll be drawing that at the start of November so you'll know whether you've won the new ink colors so the six brand new ink colors just been released but yeah everything will be on special for Catherine Puller next month this month we're concentrating on the stamps um, some VersaFine Claire ink pads are on special and also the mica colours that I'll be using tomorrow, the mica powders, they're on special as well. So I've related the specials more to the classes that we're doing for this show. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so if you're thinking Catherine Puller Inks, wait till next month. Uh, excellent. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Cathy, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today and sharing another fantastic demonstration. Fabulous. Thank you, Michelle. Hope the rest of the day goes beautifully and crafty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. So, yeah, please go and check out the Eclectic Images website and, like you said, their Facebook page. And that month of Catherine Spooner inks sounds just divine. So make sure you go and see what's happening there. So, again, Spring into Sandown online craft show. All the details are over at our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au where you can see who we've got lined up for the rest of the day. So this is Michelle signing off. We hope you have a crafty day.